Microsoft and Lenovo are trying to destroy the free and open PC. This is the end of the world. Now that I have your attention, a buyer of the recently released Lenovo ThinkPad Z13 noticed a pretty big problem. It seemed completely unable to boot Linux. So this was originally discovered by Matthew Garrett, a Linux security specialist and written about over on his blog. Lenovo shipping new laptops that only boot Windows by default. So, this new laptop, the Z13, ships with the AMD Ryzen Pro 6860Z, but the CPU itself doesn't particularly matter. What's far more important is what ships inside of the processor. It ships with the Microsoft Pluton coprocessor. This is a recently announced and recently released security coprocessor. By recently released, I mean it's made its way to public hardware somewhere in the past couple of months, and it's supposed to serve a a fairly similar function to things like TPM. Now this is going to be a very eagle eye view of what TPM, what Pluton actually do, but basically they're a way to handle hardware level cryptography. So if you want to have a signed bootloader for example to ensure that nobody's actually messed with it, this is the way you'd go about doing so. There are more malicious use cases like hardware level DRM, but I don't believe any of those have actually been applied in the real world yet, but it is a theoretical possibility. The problem though, is TPM has some glaring issues. So for firmware TPM, which is TPM running in software on the CPU, it turns out it's very susceptible to CPU vulnerabilities. Who would have guessed? And this isn't just a theoretical possibility, there have been meltdown style vulnerabilities that do affect these cryptographic keys. Then there is hardware level TPM, where you have a TPM module actually attached to the motherboard. Turns out with that one, that if you know where the TPM module is, and you know how the motherboard's laid out, it's pretty rudimentary to sniff out those keys. With Pluton on the other hand, this doesn't exist as a separate module, it exists directly on the CPU die, which should make it much harder to tamper with. Pluton also exists on the Xbox One and has been used there for the past 9 or so years, with no major vulnerabilities, so there is some merit to that claim. While I'm talking about an AMD system today, if you're going to hate Microsoft for making this, you have to understand who else is involved. So this is a joint effort between Microsoft, Intel, AMD, and Qualcomm. So basically everybody that matters. So probably coming the next generation, if you're going to buy a new CPU, you're not going to escape it. It's going to be on pretty much everything, and if not next generation, then absolutely the generation after that if the program doesn't get scrapped altogether. So this Pluton processor makes up a part of the secure boot process. I mentioned this before, ensuring that nobody is tampered with the bootloader, nobody is tampered with the UEFI and things like that. Whether it's a good idea is sort of besides the point, that is the goal of the processor. Now, if you use Linux, you would know that it does support secure boot. Not every single distro, but there are distros that do support it. So, what is happening here? And what makes this extra confusing is Lenovo said when they started shipping CPUs with the Pluton processor, they would have it disabled by default. So, basically what happened here is Microsoft has a program called Secured Core PCs, a Windows 11 PC for advanced security needs. Secured Core PCs provide extra protection for people handling your most sensitive information. This is a program aimed at, you know, suit-wearing corporate business people who want to have this aura of security, who want to outsource their security to someone else. In this case, that someone else being Microsoft. This is not aimed at, you know, the neckbeards who want to spend all day reading up on CVEs and making sure their system is as secure and as airtight as physically possible while still having a usable system. So Dell, HP, Acer, Fujitsu, Getac, Dynabook, and obviously Lenovo all have devices involved in this program, either as the way they're pre-configured out of the box or as a purchase option when you buy it from the manufacturer. And as of this year, 
there is a new requirement for the program. So with this new Pluton Power Secure Boot, it's important your OS isn't just signed with any old UEFI key. It needs to be signed with Microsoft's key. So in the case of Windows, it is signed with Microsoft's first party UEFI certificate. But obviously Linux distros aren't going to be first party. And Linux distros also work in a very different way from Windows. So when you want to have a Linux distro booted with Secure Boot, it needs to have this shim that is signed with Microsoft's key. The shim is going to be signed with Microsoft's third party UEFI certificate. And the new requirement is third party key signing is disabled by default. Now, this probably sounds really, really bad, but the story has been overblown in many ways. So it's not that you cannot boot Linux. You cannot boot Linux with the default configuration. And Lenovo has documentation on how to change this, enabling secure boot for Linux on Lenovo secured core PCs. Pretty much all you do is you go into the UEFI and you change this toggle here, allow Microsoft third-party UEFI certificates, and you reboot and it works. And that's all you need to do. Or if you don't want secure boot, you just turn secure boot off. I've seen some people sharing this around. This is not a requirement for Windows 11. This is not a requirement if your system is not part of the secured core PC, or you're not trying to get it to be a part of that program. So if you build the system yourself, you buy a pre-built from outside of the program, this does not have to be enabled. Now it might be enabled if you buy a pre-built because they want to go and enable it, but it doesn't have to be. And more importantly, this is only a problem if you have secure boot enabled. And right now, you don't need to enable secure boot, so get rid of it and the problem just vanishes. Now, there are reasonable concerns about future DRM protocols requiring it. I can't speak for things that haven't happened yet, but it does seem like a legitimate concern. For that though, pretty much all you can do is vote with your wallet and refuse to support games that won't work on anything that's not secure booted. So does this raise concerns that Microsoft is trying to destroy Linux? Well, maybe you can make the argument in the consumer space where, you know, Microsoft wants everybody to be using Windows. But when we're talking about development and, you know, the back end with web servers and things like that, Microsoft uses Linux. They don't want Linux to go away because then they would need to go and actually improve their stuff and make it better for those use cases than Linux already is. When right now they can just use it and go about their day. So let me know in the comments down below, do you think Pluton is a big deal? For me, I think there are certainly concerns with the fact that it requires Microsoft signing key. So there may be issues in the future with keys being outdated and things not actually working like they should be. But as for whether it's a big deal and going to lock down the desktop, I just say if you don't like it, avoid the secured core PCs. And if you buy a system that has it enabled, just disable it and go about your day. But maybe you disagree. And if you do, let me know down below. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Barrow Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.